No, chloroform doesn't render people unconscious instantly like in the movies. Achieving that effect will require a considerable amount of time and there's a high risk of causing death. In fact, originally, chloroform was used as an anesthetic in many medical procedures. However, its use just decreased because many patients ended up dying on the operating table as a result. There have been cases of chloroform-related deaths in recent years, and there are strong suspicions that the substance is highly carcinogenic. Therefore, the procedure we are discussing isn't recommended, and I must advise you not to attempt it at home. So why am I doing this? Well, for starters, because it's fun. But also, chloroform is widely used in chemistry as a solvent. Its low miscibility with water and low boiling point make it an ideal solvent for several chemical structures. With that being said, let's dive in. I will synthesize chloroform using ingredients you can purchase from a store, bleach and acetone. First, I need to determine the concentration of sodium hypochlorite in the bleach, which is relatively simple. I will react the bleach with some hydrogen peroxide, which releases oxygen. By measuring the amount of oxygen produced, we can calculate the amount of hypochlorite that reacted. Then we can determine the concentration by knowing the amount of bleach we used for the reaction. I have included calculations for this in the video's description. For this, I used an addition funnel. On top of the funnel, I placed an adapter connected to a piece of plastic tubing that ends in an inverted graduated cylinder. This setup is designed to capture and measure the oxygen produced during the reaction. I added hydrogen peroxide to the addition funnel. When I opened the valve, the hydrogen peroxide falls into the flask below. The side tube allows me to add liquid without altering the pressure of the system. The oxygen that is generated in the reaction travels through this tube into the plastic tubing and is collected in the inverted cylinder. Let's see the system in action. When I open the valve, the peroxide contacts the bleach, producing oxygen which is collected in the graduated cylinder. I repeated the process three times to ensure accurate concentration. In each reaction, I measured five milliliters of bleach and the final concentration was around 0.7 molar. We need to know the concentration of sodium hypochlorite in the bleach because we are making it react with acetone. We need to ensure all the acetone reacts. Any leftover acetone will be difficult to remove later on. To ensure complete reaction, I use 5% less acetone, which in my case was around 46 grams. I measured the acetone and added it to the bleach. I had to ensure the bleach was cooled down to around 2 degrees Celsius because the reaction is highly exothermic and the chloroform could potentially boil, which would be problematic. I shook the bottle a few times, opening the cap and letting the gases escape. Then I measured the temperature again, and in my case, it didn't exceed 25 degrees. I let the bottle sit overnight to complete the reaction. The reaction between acetone and sodium hypochlorite produces chloroform, sodium hydroxide, and sodium acetate. The next day, I emptied the bottle. Chloroform is denser than water, so it should be at the bottom of the bottle. I started pouring some of the contents into a beaker. This mixture is mostly water, but some chloroform dissolves in it, making the solution cloudy and bubbly. The bubbling is caused by the chloroform evaporating from the liquid, so this needs to be done in a well-ventilated place. In the end, I poured the part with chloroform into a separation funnel. I let it sit for a few minutes to allow the chloroform to settle down. I recovered most of the chloroform, cleaned the separation funnel, and added the chloroform back along with some concentrated sodium chloride solution. 
The saturated solution will absorb most of the water in the chloroform. I mix the funnel a few times, making sure to open the valve to let some of the vapors escape. Then I let the mixture sit for 20 minutes more and drain it over some calcium chloride to remove more water. Sadly, I recovered too little chloroform, so I had to do this all over again with another bottle. Once I had enough chloroform, I prepared a distillation setup to clean it more. Chloroform has a very low boiling point of around 60 C. To better control the distillation process, I used a water bath to heat the solution. I also kept the calcium chloride in the bottom flask to trap any remaining water. And it worked really well. Some people have reported a cloudy mixture at the beginning of the distillation but my chloroform seemed to be just clean since the start. The distillation process was quite straightforward and quick. I finished in about 30 minutes. As a good measure, I discarded the first part of the distillate, though I'm sure it was just dry chloroform. I stored my chloroform in a glass bottle wrapped in aluminum foil. Chloroform tends to react under light, forming phosgene, which is highly toxic, so it must be kept in the dark. I also added a milliliter of absolute ethanol as a stabilizing agent.